Here's something that might surprise you. Last year, flu vaccines prevented over 10 million flu cases and saved 8,000 lives. But I bet you still have questions about whether you really need that annual flu shot. And if you're unsure about the safety of vaccines, you're definitely not alone. Vaccine hesitancy and skepticism are growing, with more people questioning if vaccines are necessary, effective, or even safe. Today, I'm going to answer the six most common questions patients ask me about flu vaccines, including those tough ones about risks and why some people hold back. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly why doctors continue to recommend the flu vaccine every single year, and you'll have the facts needed to make your own informed decision about your body. I'm Dr. Zay Fadul, and if you're someone who wants straight, science-based answers about your health, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I share evidence-based medical advice every week to help you make informed decisions about your health. Every fall, the same debate happens in doctor's offices across the country. Patients wonder, do I really need a flu shot this year? Some worry about side effects. Others question if it actually works. And many healthy people think they don't need protection at all. Here's what I've learned in my years of practice. The confusion isn't your fault. There's a lot of mixed information out there. So today, we're cutting through the noise. I'll give you the facts about flu vaccine benefits and risks, plus answer the questions I hear most often from my patients. Let me start with the most important thing you need to understand. Influenza isn't just a bad cold. It's a serious illness that sends over 600,000 Americans to the hospital every year and kills 20,000 more on average. The flu vaccine works by training our immune system to recognize and fight specific flu viruses. But here's the catch. Flu viruses are constantly changing. It's like they're wearing different disguises each year. This process is called antigenic drift, and it means last year's vaccine might not recognize this year's flu strains. Think of it like updating your phone security software. You wouldn't use last year's antivirus to protect against this year's new computer threats, right? Same principle applies to flu vaccines. Plus, your antibodies levels naturally drop over time. Studies show they start declining about 41 days after vaccination and keep decreasing throughout the year. Now let's talk about what the flu vaccine actually does for you. First, it prevents illness. When the vaccine strains match a circulating virus as well, it reduces your risk of getting the flu by 40 to 60%. That might not sound perfect, but it's pretty impressive for a vaccine that gets reformulated every single year. But here's something many people don't even realize. Even when you do get the flu despite being vaccinated, you'll likely have a much milder illness. Vaccinated people who end up in the hospital have shorter stays and are less likely to need intensive care. The vaccine also protects your heart. People with cardiovascular disease who get vaccinated have a 37% lower risk of major cardiac events like heart attacks. And if you're pregnant or have a baby at home, this is crucial. When pregnant women get vaccinated, it protects both mom and baby for months after birth. Now let me answer those burning questions you probably came here with. Question one, can I get the flu from the flu shop? This is the number one concern I hear and I get why people worry about this. The short answer is no. The flu shot cannot give you the flu. Here's why. The injectable flu vaccine contains either killed virus or just a single gene from the virus. Dead viruses can't cause infection. It's like trying to start a campfire with ashes. It's just not possible. The nasal spray vaccine does contain weakened live virus, but it's been modified so it can't cause flu illness in healthy people. So why do some people feel sick after getting vaccinated? Two reasons. First, your immune system is doing exactly what it should, which is creating protection. This can cause mild symptoms like aches or a low fever. Second, other respiratory viruses are circulating at the same time, and the vaccine takes about two weeks to provide full protection. Question two, why do I need a flu shot every single year? It's a great question. As I mentioned earlier, flu viruses constantly mutate. Each year's vaccine contains different strains based on which viruses scientists predict will circulate most widely. It's like this. Imagine you're a security guard who needs to recognize three specific troublemakers who keep changing their appearance. Every year you get updated photos of what they look like now. That's essentially what the annual flu vaccine does for your immune system. Question three, is the flu vaccine safe during pregnancy? Absolutely yes. And it's actually especially important during pregnancy. Pregnant women have a higher risk of serious complications from the flu because pregnancy naturally suppresses the immune system. The CDC specifically recommends flu vaccination for all pregnant women. The vaccine protects both mom and baby, and studies show it cuts the risk of flu-related hospitalization in half for pregnant women. One important note though, pregnant women should only get the injectable vaccine, not the nasal spray. Question four, can I get vaccinated if I have an egg allergy? This used to be a bigger concern, but the guidelines have changed. Most people with egg allergies can safely receive flu vaccines now. 
Even if you have a severe egg allergy, you can still get vaccinated. You'll just need to be monitored by healthcare providers who can manage allergic reactions. There are also egg-free vaccine options available. Question five, do I need a flu shot if I'm young and healthy? Yes, and here's why this thinking can be dangerous. Healthy people get the flu too. During the 2018 and 19 season, 93% of adults hospitalized for flu had at least one underlying condition, but that still means 7% were previously perfectly healthy. Plus, getting vaccinated isn't just about protecting yourself. It's about protecting your community. When enough people are vaccinated, it creates what we call herd immunity, which protects vulnerable people who can't be vaccinated, like infants under six months old. Think of vaccinations as both a personal choice and a community benefit. Young and healthy, old and sick, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a risk of dying from the flu. You're at a higher risk if you have something like high blood pressure like I do, and you are still at risk if you're 25 and in the prime of your life. Young people die from the flu, and that's why we recommend everybody generally get vaccinated. So when you have someone who can't get vaccinated for whatever reason, you're actually doing them a solid by getting the flu shot because it limits the risk of you carrying the flu and transmitting it to somebody else. Question six, what if I'm feeling sick? Should I wait? If you have a mild illness without fever, like a simple cold, you can still get vaccinated. But if you have a moderate to severe illness with fever, you should wait until you recover. This isn't because the vaccine is dangerous when you're sick. It's because if you develop any symptoms afterwards, you won't know if they're from your illness or normal vaccine reaction. But what are the risks of the flu shot? Most side effects are mild and temporary. The most common ones are pain, redness, or swelling at the injection site. This affects about one in four people and usually lasts for a couple of days. You can also develop a low-grade fever, muscle aches, or headache, and these happen in about 1% of people. A lot of people feel tired or slightly unwell. Serious side effects are extremely rare. The most concerning is anaphylaxis, which is just severe allergies, followed by Guillain-Barre syndrome, which causes temporary muscle weakness. But this happens in only one case per million vaccinations. To put that in perspective, you're much more likely to get Guillain-Barre from the flu itself than from the vaccine. There's no significant increase in other neurological or vascular events in recent years. The risk of febrile seizures is slightly increased in young children, but the absolute risk remains low. There's also no evidence of increased risk for miscarriage or neonatal death in pregnant women. I know some of you might still be hesitant. Maybe you've heard stories about someone who got sick after their flu shot, or you're worried about putting chemicals into your body. Here's what I want you to remember. Every medical decision involves weighing risks and benefits. The flu kills 18,000 to 60,000 Americans every single year. The vaccine prevents millions of illnesses and thousands of deaths annually. When you look at these numbers side by side, for me, the choice becomes clear. But the point of this video is so that you can make a choice for yourself. Let me wrap this up with the key points you need to remember. First, the flu vaccine cannot give you the flu. That's a myth based on misunderstanding how vaccines work. Second, you benefit from getting it every year because flu viruses constantly change and your body anti-levels decline over time. Third, it's safe and recommended during pregnancy and most people with egg allergies can receive it safely. Fourth, even healthy young people benefit from vaccination, both for personal protection and community health. Fifth, mild illness isn't a reason to delay vaccination, but moderate to severe illness with fever is. And finally, serious side effects are extremely rare, much rarer than serious complications from the flu itself. The bottom line is this, the flu vaccine is one of the most effective tools we have to prevent a serious illness that affects millions of people every year. The benefits far outweigh the risk for nearly everyone. If this video helped clear up your questions about flu vaccines, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might benefit from this information too. Do you have more questions about vaccines or other health topics? Drop them in the comments below. Trust me, I read every single one and often turn your questions into future videos. And don't forget to subscribe for more evidence-based health content. I'm here to help you make informed decisions about your health with reliable science-backed information. This is the same advice I give my wife and my family. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay healthy.